Hi, everybody. Welcome to the special CUBE presentation, the CUBE After Dark. We're here at Lamar at Pier One and a Half in San Francisco. Another offshoot of RSA. RSA all week, the CUBE covering it wall to wall. We're here with the NYSE, Intel, Intel Capital, Elastic, and Open Policy. Aaron Fulkerson is here with me. He's the CEO of Opaque Systems. Aaron, great to see you. Thanks for spending some time well, thanks in the for CUBE having me, After Dave. Dark. So tell us about Opaque Systems. Yeah, it's a really exciting story. Uh, what Opaque allows you to do for enterprises is to run AI workloads on encrypted data. So came out of the Berkeley Rise Lab, a bunch of PhDs, including some that helped start Databricks and any, any scale. And uh, they built a foundational technology that allows the large enterprise to build AI workloads. Okay, so the, explain the problem because it's hard to run AI on encrypted data because the data is encrypted. Yeah, right? so uh, the team, going back nine years ago, partnered with Intel to develop this foundational technology that allows you to run these large scale workloads. So I'll give you some examples. The problem with AI right now is that people are struggling to get their AI jobs into production. They're stuck in pilot, not because of challenges with the technology, it's challenges with the data, ensuring that it's kept private, secure, and people retain sovereignty of their data. So what Opaque allows organizations to do is to remove all of the complexity by just making sure that the data is kept sovereign and we can prove it because we keep an audit trail and allow them to run their workloads on encrypted data. Yeah, it's true. I mean, the data clearly shows that, that most organizations aren't in full-scale production, or if they are, what are they doing? They're doing, you know, chatty-like workloads, right? They're summarizing text, marketing copy, uh, maybe code generation, but they're not really driving sort of those use cases that are going to be driving revenue, and when you ask them why, they say, we don't trust it, we're worried about IP leakage, worried about privacy. You're saying that's what you're attacking. That's exactly right. So some of our customers include a uh, auto manufacturer who has a generative AI implementation stuck in pilot, and we've, unable, we've enabled them to unblock it, get it into production, and allow them to uh, ensure that their data doesn't leak as part of their generative AI implementation. Uh, we also have projects underway at New York Stock Exchange where they're doing analytics across multiple business units. The challenge for them is around data policies within each one of those business units being complicated to navigate because each of the business unit has different policies. They can encrypt the data and then run analytics or machine learning workloads across the data while encrypted. And then we can prove with our audit trail that their data policies have been uh, honored and that their data sovereignty has been uh, kept. And you guys run in the cloud? You run on-prem? Both? How do you handle Both. That? We have. Our, our SaaS offering, most of our customers deployed inside their virtual private cloud. Uh, another example is the European Union. They do cybersecurity analysis across data from each EU member country. It's difficult for them to share that data because it's EU citizen data, but what Opaque allows them to do out of the box is each of the EU member countries encrypt their data, they run it in a virtual private cloud, and then they can identify ransomware attackers that across country borders and then preempt it. Isn't it amazing? There was a time where it was like, oh yeah, cloud, everything's in the cloud. And now it's like, well, hold on. You know, we want, we have to have our own private data, our private AI is kind of an emerging thing. Now, what's your background? So, I've uh, I'm spent my entire career in, in enterprise software. Most recently, I was at ServiceNow. Oh, okay. So, I was a general manager at ServiceNow. I launched a business unit there. I also helped them get up and running their first business application, which was their customer workflows back in 2019. Ah, okay, yeah, I remember when they launched that whole whole initiative. Okay, you guys have raised, what'd you say, 32 million, is that right? 32, yeah. And then, who, who funded you? Intel Capital's one of them. Yep. And then Walden Catalyst, uh, Storm Ventures, Race, uh, it's, it's, actually, honestly, I, I joined last year, I can't even keep track of the investors. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's a long list. Enough. So, you got product market fit? Do you feel like you have product uh, market fit? Okay. Absolutely, I mean, the simple statement is we're stuck in pilot with our AI projects. We can't get the toy into production, and that's the product market fit that we're solving right there. Okay, so you were brought in to scale go-to-market fit. Correct. Right? So, 
What's your philosophy on scaling go to market? How, how does, what's the state of the art on scaling go to market? It's all about telling the customer story. So when I joined Opaque, really deep technology, five PhDs from Berkeley's Rise Lab, it was all about the technology. And they nailed it with the technology, really exceptional deep tech, but the story they were telling was the technology story. So this next phase of the company is all about customer spotlights. We host the Confidential Computing Summit. It's our conference in June. We've got everybody from the CEO of Accenture speaking at our summit as a keynote. We've got the CTO of Azure speaking. We've got Anand, who's the VP GM from Intel, speaking there. And it's all about the customer story. Yeah, and that story is getting you unstuck so you can take your Gen AI workloads, get them into production, and actually start generating revenue. This is super important because 44% of the customers tell us that they're stealing from other budgets to fund their Gen AI, and so that can't last forever. Gen AI has to start producing revenue so that it can be self-funding. Yeah. Are you seeing that in the base? Absolutely, and it, it's what, what I've seen is 2023 had an estimated market size of 196 billion in total AI spend. That's everything from analytics to machine learning to generative AI. Mm -hmm. Then if you look at multiple independent third-party analyses of that spend, you'll see estimates from three to 10% of that spend going into production for AI projects. Now that's not just Gen AI, that's anything from analytics to machine learning, the whole spectrum of AI. Opaque helps with from everything across that spectrum to move it into production by unblocking the company, by ensuring that their data is kept secure, private, sovereign, and we can prove it with audit trail that's signed by the GP or CPU manufacturer where they're running those AI workloads. So Aaron, last question as the CEO, what are your top priorities for, for the next 12 months? What should people be watching in terms of project uh, progress for Opaque? You know, it has been such a whirlwind with generative AI and this catalyst moment going back just to when ChatGPT came out where everybody's imagination was ignited about what they can do with AI and the complexity with getting AI projects up and running. The barriers just got so much lower on the technology side. It's really about responding to the market demands and being able to scale to those demands. So what you'll see from Opaque over the next 12 months is just customer story after customer story after customer story as we grapple with how do we service the market demand which is so massive. I, I lied. Last question. What, how do you, what, do you, what am I buying? I'm buying a, a SaaS service? Yeah, that's correct, it's software stack. You can run it in the cloud, in our cloud, in your cloud, or on-prem. We don't care. So your, your key metric, I presume, is you, you, get, you get the customer, yeah, great new logo, but you got to keep that customer. As you know, you know, churn is the silent killer of SaaS companies, so it's all about retention. I'm sure that's a big focus. We have such a technological defensive barrier. There's nobody out there who's allowing people to run AI workloads on encrypted data with no, per the performance hit is single digit percentages. There's legacy technologies like homomorphic and multi-party compute, they don't scale, they're not right. cloud scale. So there's nothing out there that delivers the performance level of AI workload for encrypted data like opaque. So retaining the customer is just, I don't see it as an issue anytime soon. Yeah, so the CTOs will tell you, I would love to encrypt everything, but there's a penalty to pay. If I don't have to pay that penalty. You don't have to pay yeah. the penalty with opaque, that's a fact. Yeah. Aaron, it's, thanks so much for coming thank you, on theCUBE. Really thanks appreciate for having it. me. All right, keep it right there for more action from theCUBE after dark from Lamar off of RSAC 2024. We'll be right back.